Hi, welcome in everybody. We're just gonna give a couple minutes for everyone to kind of come in and join in the webinar. Yeah, I see the attendee count starting to pop up now. I was telling Justin earlier, I was like, yeah, Zoom does a super weird thing where like people come in one at a time. Like I can see the attendee count is just going up one at a time. And it's super weird because I thought like Zoom would just allow an entire waiting list going in at one time. So it's it's super weird to have like today's technology where you still have to go in in a line. It's super oh, weird to me. Oh, I found, I found it now. There we go. Yeah, you see it. <laughs> it's just going out like one at a time. It's a suspense. Yeah, I mean, while everyone's coming in, feel free to drop in uh, kind of where you're tuning in from. I think last webinar one that we had with Lisa, we had people all the way from like Japan and like Singapore, which was kind of crazy. For, wow. Like <laughs> just doorvest in general it's like wow people are tuning in from like singapore to invest in like u.s real estate global now also i see the chat coming in it's going to just the panelists if you guys want to attend change that to panelists and attendees so that everyone can see it oh there we go all righty looks like the count's starting to slow down a bit all right well for everyone like just joining us right now on behalf of the entire doorvest team welcome in uh, today, I'd love to introduce our very, very special guest, Justin Reinhardt. I'm sure Justin will kind of share more about himself later, um, but he's an insurance broker from Goosehead Insurance, and he's helped many, many, many of our doorvesters get great rates on their rental property insurance. Uh, before Justin teaches us all about like kind of insurance and all things insurance for rental properties, I wanted to give you guys a few housekeeping items. Um, first, I'll send you guys all a recording of this uh, webinar after it's been processed and edited. Um, that you should expect an email directly from me in a day or two. Uh, second, we'd love to hear from you. So, you know, Justin would love to hear from you, kind of make this more interactive. That's what's going to make it more fun. Um, so feel free to look at the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen of your bottom of your Zoom window. You should be able to click Q&A and pop up a window that will allow you to kind of put questions in for Justin to answer at the end of the webinar. Uh, he'll be taking those at the very, very end. Uh, so please feel free to wait for that. Um, yeah, I'm not the star of the show, Justin is, so that's it from me. Justin, please go ahead and introduce yourself. How's it going? How's it going? Um, my name is Justin Reinhardt. Uh, I live out here in Dallas, Texas. Um, I've been working with uh, Dorvest here for, uh, goodness, it's about nine or ten months now. So it's been, uh, it's been pretty awesome watching them, uh, them grow um, pretty, pretty crazily and pretty fast. Um, it looks like we have a couple people here from California, so that's exciting. Um, yeah, so I'd love to, uh, to hop right in here. So welcome investors and, uh, congrats to all of you on, uh, on making your way towards that financial freedom, um, that all of us are really striving to get to. So, um, go ahead and start. Oh, there we go. Pardon my, uh, my slide effects. I got very excited. Um, awesome. So, uh, Goosehead, why, why did, uh, we kind of fit perfectly with Dorvest model. Well, uh, Dorvest, you know, uh, as your guys client or as your guys investors, um, you know, you guys are coming from different areas, have different needs, have different wants. Um, we are actually a choice model insurance company. So what that means is rather than being just one company, we actually work with 52 plus different carriers. Um, each carrier kind of has a different appetite for who they're looking for and then what kind of property they like to insure. So we're always gonna be able to find the best on the market as well as make sure that you know, you're know you well taken care of on the back end of things. Um, everything's very quick and easy, uh, very smooth. Um, I get introduced to you guys through typically Katie or somebody else on the closings team and then um, get a little bit of information and then I send you back a quote, hopefully same day, um, barring anything crazy. But uh, if not, then first thing in the morning the next day. Um, what we do over here at Goosehead is pretty unique to our area. Um, so we like to um, separate ourselves by our uh, service team actually. So heaven forbid anything does happen to your guys' rental properties or if ever you need to make any changes, I'm always happy to help out. Um, I consider myself more of the quarterback in that kind of situation where we actually have um, about 380 different service agents across the country as well, where they're continuously servicing policies, they're filing claims, and they're actually following up. Uh, they have a minimum of or maximum of a two-day um, follow-up period where they're making sure that everything's being taken care of. That way, everything's off of your guys' plates in the meantime. Um, I like to consider us, you know, the the gap 
between uh, you guys as the investors and the insurance companies. That way you guys don't have to deal with any of the headaches, any of the slippery slopes. Um, our entire service team is completely licensed um, fully for every policy that they're touching. So they know exactly what the lingo is. They know exactly what's going on and they consider themselves uh, the experts here. Um, definitely uh, more so than myself. Um, so um, go ahead and hop on to the next slide here. Oh, whoopsies. Sorry about that, getting ahead of myself. So um, there's some different things that go into uh, to rating your, uh, your insurance score. So um, what an insurance score is, it's kind of like a credit score. And what that'll do is anytime you file a claim, anytime you, um, you know, have a lapse in coverage, um, anytime you're really on time with your payments, anytime you, you know, don't go a certain amount of time with the claim, um, your insurance score actually will increase or decrease depending on how that goes. There's a couple of things that go into it and I kind of highlighted just a few of them. There's about 50 something different rating factors. Um, but the first one is the replacement cost. So this is just the standard style of your home, um, the way it's built from the ground up of the, uh, the slab foundation there. So that replacement cost, we get some information from you guys, get some information from DoorVest, and then uh, some information from the county cat and Zillow as well. Enter that all into a nice little rating system and uh, kind of spits out a number that this is typically what they would uh, recommend at this period in time, um, it would cost to rebuild it. So it's definitely keeping up with the price of lumber, price of uh, you know, all, the, all the things needed to rebuild the home itself. Um, that's pretty much what the replacement cost is. Um, deductibles is definitely a rating factor. Um, depending on how high or low you place your deductible, that's gonna probably have the biggest effect on your actual premium itself. Um, with maximum um, level of deductible, we can do is 5% over here. And that's of your actual dwelling replacement cost, the first thing that we talked about. So um, lowest would be 1% um, with most of our carriers over here. Another thing that's gonna be a big uh, rating factor that we have is going to be our roof ages. Um, believe it or not, that is uh, down here in Texas, we have tons of hail claims. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, something that I would say is probably the second highest uh, claim being to, you know, water leaks in, in a home or something like that. Um, but we see roof claims um, quite a bit down here. So that's why we like to try to keep those deductibles uh, at a maximum of 5% where, you know, some other states we have a little bit more leniency with those deductibles. Um, another thing is, you know, the updates in the home, which DoorVest always does a great job. They buy these uh, homes and then they're immediately updating um, what they're going to do on the inside from the flooring to the HVACs. Um, and then in some circumstances, obviously, they're going to replace uh, the bigger and, you know, the roofs, things like that. Um, you know, I, I touched on insurance score a little bit, um, but that's going to be more sort tailored to the actual client itself. Um, believe it or not, um, I've had situations where people have come up to me and say, hey, you know, use me on it as opposed to my husband, um, because my credit score is way better. I always run both the husband and wife, um, if you're obviously married, um, and in some circumstances is flipped. Um, there's not a lot of explanation to it besides the fact of them just not having a lot of uh, liability that the insurance, uh, you know, or a lot of risk that the insurance is valuing and they're gonna give them a lower score because of that. And that's why I always like to get as much information from you guys on the front end as possible. That way I can kind of go to work and, and get you guys the best rates possible. Um, like I said, there's a couple more on here, credit history, marital status, location. Um, you know, all, all these are pretty big rating factors. Um, you know, each, each carrier has their own appetite though. So that's why I say, Having those 52 different carriers is very advantageous, um, especially because at renewal, um, an insurance company could just decide the next day that you know you're you're a little bit more of a risk than they had thought, or maybe they've decided to go after a different uh, target market. Um, in which case, we would switch you from one carrier to another one of our awesome uh, 51 carriers there. So that's uh, pretty much all the rating factors that I'm going to touch on here. Um, I'm going to kind of break through one of our quotes here. Um, I always try to give you guys three options to start with but these are all completely customizable. Um, you know, so, so if ever we're you know, on the phone and you're going through one of these quotes with me and you wanna just break down a different uh, you know, strategy as far as these go, um, this is just what I typically start with. And then we can kind of uh, mold the clay a little bit better here. Um, but you'll see up at the top, it says your form type. So we have our different form types. We have our uh, D1, uh, DP1, which is your basic. It's only gonna cover fire and lightning, DP2, which is gonna be a, a named peril policy. And I'll jump back to that here in a second. Um, and then a DP3, which is an open peril policy. 
Um, we write all three of those. Most companies will only write one of them. Um, so it's always good that we have um, everything possible. Um, DP2 is typically where I like to swing for, um, especially with you guys trying to keep those prices nice and low um, while still maintaining coverage um, that's adequate. Um, a named peril policy is a list of about 14 different things that you're going to be covered for. It's including fire, lightning, theft, um, vandalization. It's, it's really all the big things that we typically see um, as insurance agents. Um, DP3 is an open peril policy. We're going to be covered for a list of, uh, you know, any crazy amount of things. I always like to make a joke, you know, uh, monkeys breaking down the front door to a fire burning down your home. Um, there's going to be seven things, and I'll dive into that here in a little bit, but there's seven things that none of these policies are going to cover here in the state of Texas, um, and I'll get to that whenever we get to the deductibles here. Um, but the first coverage that we're going to have is your dwelling replacement costs. Um, I jumped into that a little bit ago, but like I said, we're going to get that information from, uh, from the closing team at DoorVest. We're also going to get the information from the county CAD, the Zillow, and, uh, and the realtors associated with any uh, of the timely purchases. Um, the ICE, put all that into that rating factor and this is kind of the suggested value. We can certainly manipulate this um, to go higher if ever a client you know, is worried that this is not an adequate amount of coverage. Um, I always have a thought on that though. Um, and that is that um, when it comes to insurance companies, there is uh, you know, quite, a, quite a slippery slope um, when it comes to coverages, they'll insure you for the maximum amount of value that you wanna, uh, you wanna have there. So if, for instance, this comes out right here at right under 150,000, and, they, and you as the client want to have it covered at 500,000 for whatever reason, that's fine. They'll definitely 100% insure you for that. Um, it's almost worse to be overinsured than underinsured in my mind because you're paying for that insurance that you're not gonna touch. Um, an adjuster is still gonna come out there at the end of the day, no matter if we label everything as brand new custom grade, they're still gonna look at the value. They're actually gonna run their own rating factors. And that's why I like to keep this as accurate as possible. And, and uh, my recommendations have been pretty pretty on point when it comes to these um, in the past. But again, something that uh, that we can definitely toy with if ever you are you know a little bit uncomfortable with the amount that we're covering you out there. Um, coverage B here is going to be what's called our other structures. Other structures is anything that's not actually touching the slab foundation of the home. So for instance, like your fences, mailboxes, um, any detached garages are going to be on this. Um, and then maybe like a shed or a pergola, things like that are all going to be on your other structures. Um, everything on this policy is going to be covered to replacement costs, meaning that they're going to replace your things in your home to brand new quality. The only thing is with other structures, it's going to be covered to what's called actual cash value. Actual cash value, meaning that they're actually going to take into account of depreciation. So for instance, if you have a fence that's uh, 10 years old and some hail comes and knocks down parts of your fence, you need to file a fence claim. That's no problem at all. We're going to make sure that you're covered to the value, but they're going to take that brand new value and they're going to subtract that depreciation amount to come up with your actual cash value. Um, an adjuster typically will handle that kind of uh, metric. Um, that is uh, just you know our suggestion that we always like to start with a uh, 10 percent of that dwelling replacement co uh, cost there. Um, so next thing we have here is personal property, um, especially when it comes to uh, to rental properties. Personal property is you know, really up to you guys as the client. Um, what personal property is, is that's gonna be, if you were to take the roof off the top of your home, dump it upside down, anything that comes out is gonna be considered personal property. So, um, you know, your, your sofa, TV, things like that are all gonna be considered personal property. Um, I have a lot of people always wondering about chandeliers um, and then like, you know, refrigerators that plug into the wall, things like that. Those are actually also gonna be considered personal property. So it's not a foolproof, uh, you know, analogy I made there, um, but um, great questions nonetheless. Um, so I always like to, you know, have um, my clients at least with, you know, about $2,000, $3,000 worth of personal property. This, uh, you know, example, for instance, um, they, they weren't too worried about it. Um, they just said that the renters are going to have their own stuff. Um, so that's pretty much it as personal property goes. Um, when it comes to fair rental and additional living expense, um, in my mind, this is one of the most important um, probably the second most important on this list of coverages when it comes to, uh, you know, you as the investor. Um, what fair rental and additional living expense, another word for that would be loss of use. What that essentially is, is that's gonna be if the home burns down in a fire, for example, this is the amount of money that insurance is going to pay out during a 12 month period while we're able to replace your home as well as your, uh, you know, contents in the home. 
um, they're going to take in, you know, they're going to ask for an inventory sheet of what the rental uh, income was, you know, what, what else you're paying for. And this is going to help subsidize that loss of income in the meantime, while we're, we're repairing everything for you. Um, kind of bridging off of, you know, the second most important um, that I find value in here. Um, we're going into now the first most important, um, which is personal liability. Um, you guys as the investors um, are taking on quite a bit of liability risk um, just by strictly owning a rental property. It's a fantastic income, um, but it certainly uh, comes with a risk. And that risk is going to be covered here on personal liability. So for instance, if anybody comes into your home um, or your rental property, whether that's your renter or any of their guests um, or anybody just even, you know, stopping by to mow the lawn, something like that, um, you are the one that's held liable, not the, uh, not the renter itself. Um, so I always like to make sure that this is at least more than the dwelling replacement cost because that's going to be the first thing that uh, they would come after in some sort of lawsuit. Um, but, you know, depending on your portfolio size, depending on um, quite a bit of different things that we like to, you know, get out of the way at the very beginning, I like to, you know, ask these kinds of questions. <clears throat> um, I'll also suggest, uh, you know, what's called an umbrella policy on top of this 500,000, if maybe that's not enough there. And I'll dive into a little bit of what's an umbrella policy here in a moment. But uh, I always like to keep that maxed out, these personal liabilities at 500,000, mainly because the other, the only other option that we have here is 300,000. It's about a $5 difference for the year. So you get that extra 200,000 in, uh, in coverage there. Um, so our coverage F, this is going to be our medical payments to others. Uh, medical payments to others is uh, what I like to call don't sue me money. Um, so don't sue me money is, uh, you know, say, for instance, there's a runner on the sidewalk and they're just jogging down the, the, uh, the sidewalk there and they trip over your sprinkler system. Um, they say that you're negligible. They snap their ankle. They want to file a lawsuit into this $500,000, um, you know, uh, coin pond that we have here. Um, insurance will essentially assess the situation and offer them a settlement of $5,000 per person per occurrence um, to kind of go away. And that's why I call it don't sue me money, um, just because that's just go away. Once they accept it, there's no legal lawsuit that they can file upon you. Um, and that's why I like to keep it at $5,000. Um, that's what most of my clients go with. We can go all the way down to 1,000 with most of my carriers and all the way up to you know, 10 to 15,000 with, uh, with those carriers as well. Um, so, so that's uh, you know why we, we like to start at least with five thousand there on the uh, on the quote sheets. Um, next coverage that we have here is going to be that all other perils deductible. Um, that's kind of where I was talking about the named peril deductible and the open peril deductible. One more time for anybody joining late. Um, open peril is uh, you're covered for every single thing that you can think of, no matter how ridiculous it is, except for seven things, um, which is also not going to be covered on the other policy. Um, the named peril deductible is a list of fourteen things. Um, you know, everything from fires, theft, lightning, um, hail, um, you know, roof caving in, things like that are all going to be covered on that named peril policy um, for you there. Um, the, uh, the deductibles that I have here um, are going to be five and one percent. That's just to kind of show you the differences of, uh, of where the, uh, the prices are affected most. Um, and that's why I say that all this is completely customizable, because if you wanted to go with two or three or four percent, totally fine um, as well. Um, and that's going to be a percentage based on that dwelling replacement cost up there, that coverage A um, that you see up there right at the top. Um, so it'd be, you know, for instance, on option three, it'd be 1% of $149,000. So you would essentially pay in order to file a claim, you would essentially pay uh, $1,497 in order to, uh, to get that claim paid out. Um, so that's why I always say, you know, brokers are better because if you call a, um, you know, your standard carrier, even just asking a question about filing a claim, most of the time they're going to file what's called a $0 deduct or a $0 claim is essentially not filing a claim. It's still hitting your insurance score. As a broker, we work for you guys. We don't work for the insurance companies. Um, we will partner with the insurance companies to, uh, to bring them clients, but we're trying to help you guys out. So if ever, you know, you're coming to me and you're like, hey, does this make sense to, uh, to file a claim? We're going to look at, uh, we're going to get somebody out there to, uh, to, you know, give you an estimate, and then we're going to see what the uh, what the deductible is that you have, and see if it even makes sense. Um, sometimes it makes sense, a lot of sense. Sometimes it doesn't at all because obviously your your premium the next year could be higher. Um, and then we also have our wind and hail deductible, which is probably uh, in Houston. It's not so bad up here where I am in Dallas. Um, we have a lot of uh, hail damage, so I like to personally keep mine as low as possible there. But down in Houston, it's not 
something that's too too terrible. Um, so uh, I would be very comfortable with insuring my own home down there at five percent. Um, you know, any and anywhere in between. Um, wind and hail can cover. You know, your roof typically is where we see the most claims there. Any windows that get bashed in due to any uh, hail. Um, fences can get uh, can get torn down. Um, things like that. So um, that's kind of it as far as the deductibles go. Um, and then I was going to hop into the seven things that you're just not covered for on either of the policies. First one is going to be earthquake. Um, I know you guys are mostly from California. Um, being down here in Texas, that's just something that we don't have at all. Um, you know, I don't want to say it's never going to happen, but we're not on any fault lines. We're not, you know, we, we hardly see any, any uh, even movement in the uh, in the earth down here. So earthquake is uh, not going to be covered on any of our dwelling policies. I do have one carrier that offers it. So if ever you are worried, um, not a big deal. Um, they're a fantastic company as well. Um, second one they are not going to be covered for is intentional acts. Uh, I look forward to meeting all of you guys um, here in the near future, hopefully as you're, uh, you're purchasing your homes. Um, but if you burn down your home on purpose, our friendship will be in a little bit of jeopardy. Um, so please do not, uh, you know, can, uh, you know, do any insurance fraud. Um, third thing, civil and nuclear war. Um, I know it's a little crazy, but they do list it out. Civil and nuclear war. I uh, hope you're with your families. I'll be with mine. The insurance is essentially letting us know that they're just not going to be picking up their phones at that point in time. Um, so they're not going to be covering that. Um, these next ones are a little bit more serious. Um, but the fourth thing is actually infestation. So infestation ranges for everything from, you know, uh, rodents to bugs. And actually is also going to cover termites as well. Um, we don't have a huge termite problem in, uh, in any of the areas that I've seen that where you guys are, um, are buying from. Um, but, you know, I do like to let you know that, uh, that that's not going to be covered. Pest control companies are who you would want to call for that. They offer coverages for this, uh, this sort of need here. Um, fifth thing that we have on here is neglect. Um, so if ever you're not going to have any renters for 60 or more days, that's no problem at all. Um, but, uh, that's gonna be considered neglect. So there's some ways around it. Um, first thing is gonna be obviously having any neighbors, family, friends um, stop by the home, make sure it hasn't completely burned down to the ground um, or you know, just any, anybody really just taking a video and sending it to you. Um, just making sure that you can uh, cover your butt there if ever you're not gonna have anybody. Just let me know, um, we're gonna adjust the policy a little bit so that you're not gonna have any exposure there. Um, if you're not able to have anybody um, come by, but neglect is also not gonna be covered there. Um, the sixth thing of the seven is going to be wear and tear. This is just, uh, you know, for instance, paint chipping in your kitchen. It's up to the homeowner as their responsibility to maintain the home. We're here as the insurance providers to, uh, to cover those big uh, uh -oh moments where it's really going to affect your bank account. Um, so uh, the standard wear and tear of your home is not going to be covered. Um, seventh and final thing is flood. Um, so being that you guys are in Houston, I'm sure you guys see on the news, uh, Hurricane Harvey, um, just came through uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, you guys, for the most part, I've noticed uh, Dorvest is really good about strategizing where they're getting homes from. They always make sure that they're in a low risk flood zone. Um, a low risk flood zone is, uh, is an area where there's uh, less than five exposures per year that they're going to, uh, that they're going to account for, um, which is, you know, pr pretty dang good. Um, but being that you are in Houston, you, uh, um, you are going to, sorry about that. Um, you are going to, uh, to certainly want to consider it. Um, uh, I always include the pricing um, for you off the bat, just uh, you know, as, a, as a thought process as you're going through that, um, but it's certainly nothing to, uh, to stress out about if, uh, if need be. Um, coming down to here to our additional coverages here, um, you do have um, some things included in your policy. And it's gonna be those top three things. Um, I said earlier that everything is going to be covered besides that other structures there on the coverage B. Um, that's going to be that actual cash value, if you remember. Everything else is going to be covered to replacement cost. So it's going to be as if it was repaired brand new. Um, brand new, uh, you know, countertops. If you have, uh, you know, a sofa that you're uh, having there that your renters didn't provide and you're covering that on your personal property, that's going to be in, you bought that in maybe 2000. That's going to be covered as if it's, as if it's a 2021 sofa of the exact same uh, you know, size and likeness there. Um, so we're gonna make sure everything is covered to full replacement costs. And that does also include the roof. If ever you need to file a hail claim, um, we repair the, we make sure we cover it to repair the entire uh, roof there. Um, if anything, it does happen. Um, and then the last thing that's always gonna be included on all my policies is gonna be sudden and accidental water damage. Sudden and accidental water damage is our number one claim that we see. 
Um, that's going to be any of your common, um, you know, pipes bursting under your sink, um, faucets leaking, and anything where it's a, just like it sounds, sudden and accidental um, situation. You're going to be covered all the way up uh, to a, your policy limit. So this one, for example, is that, that 149,000. You'll be covered all the way up to whatever that number is. Um, with that being said, this is within a two-week period. Um, so within a two-week period is very uh, important to note. Um, for the most part, that's always, you know, what we do see. Um, it's not normally ever going to uh, take you more than two weeks to catch something, but we do offer coverage if ever you are worried about that. And what that's going to be is that's going to be considered water seepage. Um, water seepage is the next coverage that you see here. And essentially what that is, is that's going to cover you if, it long, if that water is sitting for more than two weeks. For the most part, this is going to be like, for instance, if your air conditioning unit um, is inside your garage. Um, sometimes people don't notice that. And also your HVAC systems, uh, you know, hot water heater, um, things like that, that are that are sporadically, you know, put in the either the attic or uh, garage for the most part. Um, that's going to be covered on that water seepage there. Um, next coverage that I have here for you guys is going to be foundation coverage. Foundation coverage is probably our trickiest one um, to explain to people, especially when claims are being filed. So I always like to make sure that they're uh, everybody's well educated in this whenever uh, uh, they're buying the policy so that they understand. But foundation coverage is not going to be if, uh, if the soil shifts under your home, if the land moves, uh, if anything you know, from the outside cracks into your foundation, that's not considered foundation coverage. Foundation coverage is gonna be pretty much only if a pipe uh, is going from the ground or from outside into your home or going from inside out of your home. And that, crack, uh, that pipe either cracks or bursts and it uh, splits either open the foundation, you know, secretes into the foundation, things like that um, from your home or going to your home. Um, so that's what foundation coverage is gonna be. Um, and then the final water coverage that I have for you guys here is gonna be water backup. Um, water backup is gonna be any kind of sewer line backups um, into your home, any kind of, uh, you know, overflow in the toilet or, uh, sinks and bathtubs. Um, I always make a corny joke about me having a daughter and uh, she likes to make her mermaid Barbie go swimming in the toilet quite a bit. Um, and I've had to file quite the amount of water backup claims just because she flushes and it pours all over the place. Um, so hopefully uh, your renters don't have as ambitious of a, of a swimmer like uh, my daughter is, um, but God bless her, she'll be covered on my water backup claim. Um, and that pretty much sums up most of our coverages here. We do obviously have, you know, some other built-in coverages, but these are really the ones that we adjust. Um, there's other coverages on here like uh, ordinance of law. So for instance, if ever your, uh, your area that you have your home is, they upgrade uh, their standards for what wiring needs need to be met on your, uh, on your electric uh, lines. Um, ordinance of law is going to cover you for a minimum of 10% of that dwelling replacement cost there to make sure that, you know, you're helped out there. Um, sometimes there'll be loss assessment, depending on if you have an HOA. Um, loss assessment will cover, you know, if, uh, if ever you have that nice uh, sign in front of your neighborhood whenever you're driving in, say that cracks or falls apart one day, um, your HOA is going to take an assessment and they're going to, uh, you know, obviously come knocking on your door. Insurance will cover you um, for, uh, for a good portion of that, depending on what you set it at. Um, most of my carriers have a starting at about 500 and can go all the way up to 50,000. So um, just depends on how, how much you value that. Uh, most of the time, my clients will typically leave that at $500. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's, like I said, there's a couple other built-in ones, uh, but we can jump into those ones, uh, you know, on the back end here. Um, we do also, um, as a broker, we do have our startup costs. It's going to pay for, uh, it's a one-time startup cost, so you do not pay for it again at renewal. But what that is, is that's going to be, um, essentially, it pays for my work um, as your broker. It's going to pay for my service team, which, like I said, we do have our, an army behind you. Um, they're going to always make sure that your tasks are being uh, handled correctly, claims are being filed, any coverage changes that you need, they're here to help you. They can talk, uh, call or text. Um, that's something that we actually just implemented in the past three months is texting our service team as well. Um, and then it's also going to help out with our carrier fees. We actually uh, get preferred pricing as brokers here in Texas. Um, and, you know, and across all 50 states we're actually in, um, but we get preferred pricing and that helps pay for, uh, for, for that as well. Um, like I said, that's going to be a one time that's actually built into your mortgage. So uh, you do not pay that up front unless, of course, you'd like to. Um, but we build that to the mortgage company and, and we certainly disclose it just like you see here. Um, uh, you'll notice here at the bottom, it says with a multi-policy discount. Um, I have 
about five or six carriers right now that are extremely hot when it comes to multi-policy discounts. Um, for instance, um, a couple of people in here um, have actually worked with me recently. I believe they got like a $380 discount um, for buying an umbrella um, policy, which the premises only umbrella um, in the state of Texas costs 176 with my carrier, um, with the carrier that I like to use, I guess I should say. Um, the reason why um, that is such a big difference maker, and it really doesn't make a lot of sense unless you're a broker, is because um, most company, um, most companies, for instance, this one, um, their umbrella was about four hundred and twenty dollars um, for the year. So I'm able to bundle two different carriers together, and it's, and it's a nice little privilege that we have um, here for you guys to keep those prices nice and low. Um, so that's pretty much me breaking down this quote here for you. And I lost my mouse, so there he is. Um, and obviously, you know, I'd love to, uh, to answer any questions here at the end that you guys might have about any of these coverages. Um, when it comes to your multi-policy options, um, I hinted the umbrella twice now, um, but essentially what an umbrella does is right where you guys saw that, uh, that 500,000 right here in personal liability, where you have that, uh, that exposure as the uh, investor, that's gonna add another million dollars there for you um, for this premises. Um, you can do a full personal umbrella um, caveat to that is that we have to also have your uh, your primary home and your primary auto. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind if ever you'd like to do a full personal as well. We're in all 50 states. Um, so that's definitely a good um, reason why I have Texas and California here is because that's what I'm personally licensed in. Um, being that I uh, have started working with DoorVest, it, uh, it made business sense to certainly get licensed in California um, to help you guys out. And I've definitely helped out quite a few people saving some money even out there. A um, couple other options that we have, you know, like I said, we can do your home, any other rental properties that you may have, um, autos, motorcycle, boat, um, earthquake, you know, you guys are out there in Cali, uh, that's always very useful. Um, one that we've actually just started uh, getting able to be applied uh, this week, actually, is a personal articles floater. Um, personal articles floater is uh, you can insure any item. Um, that you may have, um, and it's at your primary residence typically is where we like to have that just to keep it nice and easy. <clears throat> but I actually just insured uh, my mom's uh, wedding ring and she, uh, I think her, her wedding ring was right about 10K and that's only gonna be $110 for the year for her on that. So um, it's definitely a good thing to have there and it applied her multi-policy discount, which she uh, did not allow me to sell her on the very first time uh, that we uh, got her uh, renter's property for her out here. Um, we also do commercial insurance. And uh, like I said, we are in every single state um, across the border. So um, definitely good to, uh, to let us get a little swing at it. Um, I have uh, a team of about 20 agents on my team. Um, we ourselves are licensed in uh, 32 of the 50 states. So uh, good to go there. Um, and then, you know, as, as we're going over coverages, you know, I already have your guys' lender. Uh, I've communicated with your lender, gotten the billing information from there that we need. Um, in order to get everything processed. So that way, whenever we go over the coverages, we can just go ahead and knock it off um, of your list of things to do when it comes to, uh, to this home closing process, which if you're like me, it was very overwhelming. Um, so uh, <clears throat> definitely uh, we're all good to go there and you can check insurance off of your list of things to do when, uh, when we get the okay from you. Um, we'll go ahead then at that point and we'll send what's called a binder of insurance to your lender. That's gonna be the invoice as well as proof of your uh, actual insurance um, with our company. Um, from then, you're uh, within 24 hours. My quality control team is actually going to look over my work, make sure it's flawless, make sure it's everything that we talked about. Then they're gonna send you a DocuSign. Um, I'm sure everybody's familiar with DocuSigns over the past five years, they've uh, blown up like crazy, but uh, you're gonna get that DocuSign. That's gonna be your actual policy itself. So you're gonna look over that, make sure it's everything that we talked about, um, go ahead and sign that for me. If there's anything at that point that you'd like to change, or if you know you had second thoughts um, about anything in general, that's where you would want to let me know. Um, and obviously, you can let me know afterwards as well. But uh, that's always kind of the best, uh, you know, time to do that because then you're not, you know, signing something that you don't want to sign. I like to get everything fixed and official by that point. Um, <clears throat> and then, like I said, you know, definitely at the end of everything, save my number. Um, I'm always available. Um, I try to be available 24 hours a day, uh, especially having a, a newborn baby, I'm, I'm up like crazy. Um, so, you know, selling insurance and answering questions here for you guys at any point. And then my service team, uh, I always suggest saving their number as well. Um, you, like I said, you can call or text them. Um, they're, they're pretty uh, good about replying. Uh, and like I said, if ever, you know, you need to get anybody a, a swift kick in the butt uh, to get going, 
I'm always here to help, um, to, to help facilitate things. Um, yeah, so like I said, you know, that that's uh, pretty much the gist of how awesome insurance is. Um, I know I kept you guys very excited here um, and happy to open up the floor to, uh, to any questions here. It looks like we have a, a couple here. So let's see what we got. All right. Oh, go get them, Justin. Thanks, James. All righty. Well, it looks like we don't have very many questions. Awesome. Well, I am happy to answer questions. Um, I think we have quite a bit of time left. Um, I'm surprised there's not that many questions. Maybe you're just an awesome presenter. Yeah, I just answered, and them you all answered right everybody's away. questions already. So, yeah, I'll tell thank you, you for presenting to us. Um, you know, a lot of DoorVest customers actually go with Justin because, you know, he's familiar with the DoorVest process. He's familiar with our lenders, our partner lenders that we typically use. So he kind of has an idea of how to go end to end really quickly, get you the best rates in, um, on your rental properties. Um, so also just kind of dropping that in the chat. If you have a question, you want to talk to one of a DoorVest client advisors. Um, I dropped the link in there. It's doorvest.com slash schedule dash a uh, dash a <coughs> consultation. And then if you're you know ready to make a deposit right away, um, I also dropped the link in there in the chat as well. It's doorvest.com slash customize your home. Um, I did promise you guys a special freebie. So I'll be dropping that in the chat. That's a um, first look on the guide that I just put out on our brand new blog website that we launched this morning. Um, you'll be able to kind of read about why we think that real estate's awesome, why, you know, the benefits, tax advantages, all of that. Um, so if there's no questions coming in here, um, we'll just kind of go ahead and call it a day. Oh, I see Justin has a question. I found one. I found one. I think I was looking in the wrong spot here. Um, but we do have one question uh, from a Mr. James, uh, and apologize if I butcher this, uh, Collier. Um, but he was asking if, uh, if there's any way to see your insurance score and do investment uh, property claims hurt this score? Um, great question, Jane. Uh, Jason, I apologize. Um, as far as your insurance score, um, there are actually multiple avenues. Um, I think there's over about 100 companies that, uh, that do, uh, uh, do this. I personally don't use any of them just because we have that software built in, um, but definitely worth a good uh, Google search or I can do it for you. Um, they don't give us a specific number. They, they'll do what's called like a, a little bar and they'll show us where you are as far as moderate to average or you know below average. Um, and, and that's something I, I always like to you know let you know. That way you're aware of it uh, as far as renewals go. That way you don't hate me too much. Um, and then he was asking if uh, the investment property claims hurt this score. Um, they do. So as far as uh, your insurance score goes, it's going to follow you just like a credit score. So you have multiple credit cards. You have multiple rental properties. Um, it's going to be affected um, the way that you treat each of those. So if you're paying on time, um, if you have no lapse in coverage, um, things like that. That's where I was saying, you know, you're definitely going to want to make sure you take care of that insurance score. And that's kind of my job here as well. Um, you know, I'm not just a one-stop shop. You don't just, you know, use me one time and don't hear from me again for another year. Um, I'm here for you guys at any point in time. Um, you know, I, I want to make sure that you guys aren't doing anything that you're not sure about um, just because you don't want to pick up the phone and call me or send me an email or shoot me a text. Um, I'm here to help you guys out with, uh, with maintaining this good score here. Um, but great question, Jason. I, I appreciate uh, stepping up to, to bat on that one. Cool. Yeah, and yeah. I, I saw that. Um, I don't think you put your service number or anything like that on the slide. So I'll go ahead and send that out with um, my post webinar emails. So you'll kind of have his contact information, uh, way to contact him directly if you want to kind of talk to him one on one uh, to kind of check your claims, maybe if he can save you money on your personal claim or if you're working through the DoorVest process right now, he can kind of set you up to see if he can get you a better rate on your insurance. Um, I see Omar here. He has a question. What measures can one do to improve an insurance score? So uh, great question, Omar. Um, so insurance score is typically going to follow you. Um, and it's really depending on where you are. But for the most part, it's going to be about five to six years. Um, really the only way that you can improve your insurance score. Um, I've noticed that if you manipulate your coverages to be better, um, that's actually the one way that they look at it, just like paying off your credit card early. I'm so sorry, guys. Thank you for, uh, I don't want to do this in the dark, that'd be kind of weird. Um, but ways to improve your, uh, your insurance score. Uh, so yeah, um, you know, upping your coverages, paying on time, not having lapses of coverage, um, actually having everything that you have insured. So I know a lot of people, uh, that I've talked to actually have had their uh, homes paid off and they don't have insurance on their home. 
um, that's a negative shot on your insurance score. Insurance score. Um, everybody that I work with is government standard A plus rated carriers. Um, so they're going to make sure that they pay pretty high attention to that insurance score. There has been times in the past where I'll suggest that a client maybe um, you know, hit up a non-standard company to, uh, to take a look as well um, because they're able, you know, they don't have to follow the governmental guidelines. They don't have you know, um, certain, certain people breathing down their necks um, to make sure that things are handled properly. So I always suggest, you know, um, don't, don't just, you know, look at me. Um, if, uh, if you're not happy, um, I'm never going to, you know, say, Hey, you, you know, you have to go with me. Um, I just always say that I'm going to have the best rates if, uh, you know, you, uh, you like to hear that. So um, great question there, Omar. Uh, hope, hopefully I answered that one well. Any final questions anyone want to ask while we have Justin on the line? Not seeing anything come through. <laughs> yeah. I think you just explained it very well. Uh, ho hopefully. <laughs> I can't wait to say that exact same thing to, uh, to all of you uh, shortly. Sounds good. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone's coming through. Um, I did see you drop your number in there. For the people who are going to be watching the recording, it's 214-838-5451 for Justin's uh, number if you want to contact him directly. I'll also be sending out his email. Um, if you guys want to be able to contact him that way. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Justin, for uh, telling us all about insurance. I've learned a lot here. Um, and you definitely explained it well, broke it down a quote for us to, that we're able to kind of see uh, what would factor into how much our insurance costs. And I also want to point out that you do have the transparent pricing of that one-time broker fee as well, uh, which is something we really believe in at DoorVest of kind of being transparent with our customers so thank you for that.